What's happening folks? How's everybody doing? Today I am not, I don't have a photo vlog. I went out, I shot for about three hours yesterday and I got a few photos that I liked but they all came at a time when either before I'd started the camera or after the battery had died and I hadn't switched the battery out yet. So that was kind of a bummer. There's just not really, I didn't even shoot that much. So there wasn't really anything to show. But what I'm gonna do instead is to take you through the sort of process of editing that I have found myself sort of leaning towards recently. I did not see this coming. A few months ago, I did a video about my workflow and how I like bring RAWs in, edit them, like catalog everything in my computer and export them. And I don't really do that anymore, not for street photography. I do do it for work. So I have Lightroom for work and it is still kind of a part of this process, but if I didn't have Lightroom, I just wouldn't bother with it. So without babbling anymore, let me take you through, I'll just flip the camera around and I'll film the back of this and I'm gonna show you what I do instead of editing on the computer. Okay, let's start with this sunset yoga session picture. Basically, all I'm gonna do is hit the menu button, go into raw conversion, I made a video about this a little while ago and how it could be useful in certain situations. Since then, it's kind of became my go-to way of quickly dealing with pictures after I've been out shooting. So all I'm gonna do here is add about a third of a stop, I think. And I'm also gonna go the tone curve and darken the shadows just a little bit. And I think I like how that came out. I'll just save it at that. And when I take that JPEG out of the camera, if I want to crop it or anything like that, I would just crop it in my iPhone and save the picture that way. And then I'll keep the JPEG, like catalog it in my computer, the uncropped version. And if at some point in the future, I wanna go back, if I wanna print it or anything like that, I have the option to use the cropped or uncropped version. Now this one, just a window reflection, like shaft of light picture. And I think all I'll do with this one is go to the tone curve and darken those shadows down, make it nice and contrasty. And I would just leave it at that. Nice and simple. Don't have to mess around in Lightroom trying to decide how I want the shadows or anything like that. It just kind of comes out how it comes out. Adjust it a little bit and it looks pretty good. This one here, just gonna maybe brighten it a little bit and see how it looks. Actually might even just leave it at that. Yep, I think I'm happy with that. I'll just leave that. This one's a bit more tricky because it's in, it's the, the subject is the dog in this window and it's bad light because it's in the shade and there's lots of light behind it. So it's kind of, it's not really, it's gonna take a lot of, uh, it would take some work in Lightroom to brighten up the shadows and all that sort of stuff. And I don't think the picture's really worth going through that. So I'm gonna, Add a couple stops of brightness, but then I'm gonna bring the highlights down. See how that looks. Not too bad. I think it maybe looks a little bit too blue, so I would probably change this white balance to shade. And I actually think the shadows were still kind of dark, so I'm gonna brighten the shadows up a little bit. That's looking not bad. Again, I'm still, it's, this is the problem with these ones. It takes more editing to get stuff right and it might just not really be worth it. I'm gonna add more red because I think it was looking a little bit greenish. And there we go. I think I'll leave that one there. This was uh, just I guess it focused on the window glass. So we've got this basically just a abstract bokeh picture. So let's go into this one and I don't think I'm going to brighten it up or anything. I think I'm just going to add some contrast. So bring those shadows down. That might have been too much. So I'll bring it back. There we go, that looks good. 
and I'll probably do the exact same for this picture. I'm going to try it with plus two on the shadows again. I think I like that. Save that. And that's the last one. You'll then see that these are, you see down there the L, that means it's a JPEG. That's the pictures we just edited. And then you can just plug the SD card into your phone. You can download them, put them on Instagram, do whatever you want with them. Save them in your hard drive if you want. Crop them, whatever. I understand that this may not be a process that appeals to everybody. I don't really like to go into Lightroom. Some people do, some people enjoy that editing process and they like having as much control as possible over their edits. And I completely understand that. In many cases, I like having a bit more control over edits as well. But when I'm shooting street and it's a lot of it, I'm, I'm okay giving up a bit of control in order to just keep on shooting photos. I'd rather spend less time editing and more time shooting. I'm only 35, but like at some point, I'm probably not gonna be able to walk the streets as much. And you know what, back like down the line, that's then I can spend more time thinking about edits if I want. I'm also not the fastest learner, so the more time I spend out shooting streets instead of at my computer editing stuff, really the better for me because uh, I need to do a lot more in order to become a better photographer. Some people pick it up quicker. I also feel like when I look at a lot of the street photographers' work that I admire, it looks like they didn't spend a lot of time in Photoshop or Lightroom changing colors and editing stuff to a certain way that they wanted it. And luckily enough, this has a decent raw file processing thing built into it that, that works well, brings nice colors out that I quite like, and I can adjust white balance and all those sort of things and have a decent amount of control over like the global picture. And I think I'm fine with that. I see editing as a sort of like salt sprinkling on the top of things. It's just like finishing touches of an image. If something's not that good to start with, no amount of editing is gonna make it a great picture. Uh, it might make it kind of cool, stylized type picture, but if the picture's crap, it's crap. Doesn't matter how much editing you do to it unless you go wild and make it digital art or something. Anyways, that is just how I like to do it. Completely understand if other people like to have that control. As I say, not knocking it, not saying this is the way that you should be doing it or that anybody should be doing it. It's just the way I like to do it and sometimes people who watch this channel are interested in that. So, if that's the case, hopefully you got something out of this. And with that, I'm gonna end this video. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.